I can do A, B, and C to fix the problem. Right now, do I have your permission? That's the person I'm looking for in a company when we're hiring. You hear this a lot. You hear so, right now when we were talking about CNN and we were talking about kind of what's been going on with Kavanaugh. We've been talking for a long time, obviously, about Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And you hear people often complaining, saying, well, someone has to do something. Right? We hear that all, all the time. So, someone has to do something. Uh, I, you know, he, he was asking me, we do this kind of pre-interview, and he was asking me about this show and what, what it was that inspired uh, me to do this show. This show is the result of someone has to do something. Let me explain what that means. And, and this was important because I have an email recently from someone from the YAF conference, and I appreciate uh, the email that you've sent. By the way, life advice at lottowithcredit.com. We'll be doing a whole episode uh, with nothing but life advice that you probably won't want. But uh, I, I remember a time when uh, every conservative I knew, including myself, b***ed about how there was no conservative late They're like, where's the conservative late night? How, where's the answer to the Daily Show? You, you still often hear it, right, from people who watch cable news. How the left has a stranglehold on comedy. Everyone kept saying that, that we needed some, uh, someone's got to do something. And I remember pitching this program. Now, whether you like it, this is not the point, whether you enjoy the program or not. I know many of you do not, but you're here anyway, and I appreciate you suffering through it with us. I really do. Sometimes I wonder why you watch, but I appreciate it. I pitched this show day in and day out at Fox News for four and a half years and was told that it would never work. This very show, what you see, what you know also, by the way, has changed my mind, was turned down by, I think, every major conservative publisher. Everyone, all the ones that I can think of. There might be a few that didn't, so I don't want to drag anyone through the mud who, who wasn't involved. But at a conference table, the phrase, conservatives don't like comedy, they only want Obama doomsday books right now, were actually spoken. That's surprising. So I think this is important because we often, someone, someone's, got, someone's got to do something. We have people even come up after the show, it's like, what do I, what do I, what do I with CNN with my friends? What, someone's got to do something. And, and I, won't, I don't want to point to anyone specifically. Uh, there were, we're hiring, right? And you can go to lotofcrowder.com to see. We're, we're, we're hiring, we're moving to new spaces, expanding all the time. Um, there were some people when we were hiring, very good people, but you know this, they, they effectively just wanted to take part. We have like an 80% yeah. dropout rate. Yeah. They just wanted to come and kind of work. This isn't, this isn't for you. Uh, this is the kind of place where you do whatever it takes you grind until it's done because what? Because somebody has to do something. It applies both ways. If, 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 we stop, if we stop doing this show, there's no one to carry the mantle right now. There's no one else. There's no one else who's going to provide this. And, and, and we keep going, we keep putting ourselves through something that obviously, the, the ringer, it's, it's very difficult and it's, we're, we're getting more people coming in to do the program. I was talking with Ben about this. They have much more staff than we do, but we do it because someone has to do something. This is us doing something. You know why people can't stand complainers? And this is the someone, someone has to do something, the person who just sits idly by and says this. And believe me, I'm going to tie this into a way that's hopefully helpful. Uh, it will, will be helpful if you have ears to hear. You know why people can't stand complainers? It's, it's not just because they're annoying but they are. It's because in complainers, we see weakness. And in weakness, we see untrustworthiness. We see betrayal. The left loves to vilify. I was just talking about this with Gavin McGinnis, and this was a kind of spur. I was just talking with the left. They love to vilify the strong as toxic. Let me ask you, how many times have you been betrayed in your life by a strong man or a strong woman? How many times have you been backstabbed by the person with the backbone? The person who may be a little bit tough to deal with, might be a little bit brash, might be a little bit blunt, but gets things done. How, how many times have, have they screwed you over? Think about it, genuinely. No, it's the weak among us who hurt us. And we see weakness in complainers. Someone who is about how things shouldn't be so, oh, this thing, they, 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 I can't believe that things are this way. You and I, we, we all subconsciously say, oh, so you're not doing anything to change that it's so. They're just waiting for somebody. Somebody has to do something. That's inaction. And inaction is a decision. Someone's got to do something. We hear that all the time. Stop being the person who says that. Be the person who does something. And let me tell you something. And I, as an employer, because what I'm about to tell you applies to anyone in your life whose respect is needed to be earned at all or, or is worth earning. If there's anyone whose respect you need to earn or you think is worth earning, this applies to you. As an employer, the most valuable person to me is a guy who comes to me with solutions to problems that I didn't even know existed yet. The most valuable, the MVP is the guy or girl who says, I noticed this wasn't working properly, or I noticed that this could be made more efficient, and I thought we could fix it through ABC or XYZ. I do have your permission to do so. I am the person looking to, looking to give you more money. <laughs> Are you men enough to take it? That's the person employers are looking to promote. And it applies to every aspect of your life, from your work, to your relationships, to your marriage, to your finances. You know who the least valuable person is in a company? It's the person who says, problem, 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 
and doesn't give you any solutions. And months down the line, still no solutions. Because anyone can find a problem. But when it comes to fixing it, by God, somebody has to do something. Well, could that somebody be you? No, 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 no. So, somebody. I mean somebody in the, in the abstract. Somebody uh, 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 finds a way. And these people do this because the person who is trying to do something, also this is another important component to, to, the, important component to the whole, someone's got to do something. The person who is trying to do something, if you become that person, most of you aren't, by the way, will inevitably fail. That's a part of being the person who does something. You know who never fails? The person who sits by and says, someone has, so, someone has to do something. Will someone please think of the children? How about you think of the children? Someone has to do something. And then they can sit by and find more problems and point to the failures of the people who are doing something. But in the long run, they're not the ones helping you providing solutions. Not only are these people less valuable in an, in an employment situation, they cease to be valuable to anyone in their life. You know these, the, the problem finders, the someone has to do something, guys. Eventually, they find themselves, or herself, cast out from workplace, society, marriage, their friends. Sure, they might band together like we were talking about with Gavin McInnes and, and, and a few other, somebody got to do something, guys, for a bit, make themselves feel big, a mob mentality, but that crumbles. Back to the individual do something guy. The guy who says, I can do X, Y, I can do this. I can do A, B, and C to fix the problem. Right now, do I have your permission? That's the person I'm looking for in a company when we're hiring. And you know what? So is everyone else. It's not just about, that's the person your employer's looking to promote. That's the person your friends are looking for in a true friend. That's the person your wife is looking for in a husband. That's the person you're probably looking for in a wife. That's the person your kid's looking for in a dad. That's also the person God's looking for in a disciple. Oh, did I strike a nerve? Did I strike a nerve with all the nobility and poverty, pious, fake Christians? Everyone whose respect is worth earning is looking to bestow their best, their blessing upon the man who does something, period. And I will tell you this, I was not that person for a very long time. I sat at the, I, grateful for the opportunity, I sat at the foot of Fox News for years and put on my stupid little polos and jackets and hoped that at some point someone would do something. And I was a fool. And no, listen, this isn't, this isn't The Tonight Show. I get it. I'm no Johnny Carson. But you know what? We've achieved some relative success. Uh, and that's entirely because of you. It could all go away tomorrow. I'm incredibly grateful. And guess what? It's a whole lot more success than I had with any original show at 21 or 22 or 23 years old, hoping that someone would do something. Hoping that someone would publish it. Look, I've got this treatment for the Change My Mind book. No, no, it's, it's, someone has to do this. What we are doing is the something I wish someone had done. That's all I can do. I can't do any better than that. That's like, I can't, we created a show, we did change my mind, and I was talking with, 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 ben, with Dennis Prager about this as well. I said, we did this because we all sat around saying, the conversations that we have when we go get our hairs cut, the conversations that we have that have gotten us, unfortunately, three and a half star ratings at Uber. <laughs> You never see on air. It's not about scoring political points. That's what changed my mind was. It was someone has to do something. And I know that at least, at least millions of you have benefited. Again, I could all go away tomorrow. I'm very grateful. The reason this show exists at me being 31 years old that I was hoping to see when I was 21 years old is because I stopped at one point saying, someone's got to do something. So the most, uh, the question I most often get and we do, we'll do this life advice uh, for people who are Mug Club members, but um, can be answered really simply with this as a starting point. Often the questions are, how, how do I do this? Or how do I get started with this? Or, hey, this is happening at school. How, how do I fix this? Or someone sees me this way. It, it's usually the same answer. If you find yourself saying about your relationships, about your work life, about your finances, about what you'd like to see even in society at large, someone, if you find yourself saying someone has to do something, stop. Stop, stop saying it. Because nine times out of 10, that person has to be you or it won't happen. End of story. I'm talking to everyone out there, conservatives in the entertainment industry, in academia, on politicized uh, science, grants maybe, high profile athletes. No one is going to do it if you don't. This is the main piece of advice that I could give, if I could give to anyone. I know I'm 31 years young, who wants your advice from a 31 year old? But half the time when we get these questions from people, it can be answered very simply. Do something. Stop being the complainer. Stop being the person who screams that someone has to do something and be the guy or the girl who does it. That's it. This week, go forward, be the guy who does something. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, you first off should probably seek counseling, but 
you should subscribe or hit the notification bell or watch one of these videos that's playing. The truth is, I don't know what any of that means anymore. If you try and subscribe or hit the notification bell, you won't be notified. And if you try and click one of these videos, it's just going to take you to BuzzFeed Boldly Fat Broads as they get carried out of their houses where they had to break down the North Wall and they get carried out in a land whale tarp. I don't know what's happening on YouTube. I know what's happening with Mug Club. Lotterwithcredit.com slash Mug Club. You get to watch the daily show one hour every single day, not just clips, along with like 15 other shows for $69 annually if you're a student and, or, or, or veteran or military, and you get to keep us here on YouTube for free because we can, we can irritate them by your support. It's worth it, right?